is Mariam, and I was uh, living in and working in Pittsburgh for the past six months. Before I get to uh, my field work, I kind of wanted to talk a little bit why I decided to name my project the Share Table. Um, if you work on summer food on a day-to-day -day basis, this is something you'll probably recognize, but the Share Table is something that you'll find at summer feeding sites across the country. Um, they're a place where participants can offer up whole uneaten parts of their meal and sometimes exchange them for something they like better. So it's an apple for an orange or just an apple for a friend. Um, this is something I want you to keep in mind uh, as I move for the pre through the presentation. It acts as a pretty good illustration of how the program runs in this country, and I'll return to that at the end. But before that, I'll talk a little bit about my field work and um, sort of how uh, summer food translates as a federal policy and ends up um, as food in the mouth of a kid in Pittsburgh um, and sort of the bumps along the road as I was sort of recruiting through the program. Um, so I was placed at the Greater Pittsburgh Community Food Bank, and uh, but within that I was working with the Southwestern Pennsylvania Food Security Partnership, and this is a way to sort of understand the way we work together, um, feed the line, shorten the line. The food bank does a lot of that emergency feeding work, but the Food Security Partnership works to get people uh, enrolled in the federal nutrition programs for which they're el eligible. Um, so we work with a lot of programs, but I specifically worked with the Summer Food Service Program. Um, so in your hands, uh, you should have um, a program flowchart. Um, and so the top part really guides you through how it's administered and how the money flows through the program. And the bottom part is a snapshot of what that ends up looking like on the ground when I was working in Allegheny County, recruiting sites, sponsors, and things of that nature. So it comes from the Department of Agriculture, is administered in PA, the Department of Education, and then sponsors take on a number of sites, and those sites take on kids, and then those kids can eat during the summer. Um, so uh, the snapshot at the bottom um, is an example of just an average day um, in Allegheny County as far as summer meals go. Um, so the example of a sponsor, uh, Touching Families Incorporated, is actually based, uh, I guess where Tom Vilsack is from, Homestead, PA, um, which is a low-income area of Pittsburgh. It's a small nonprofit. They take on 15 summer feeding sites. And so what will happen is they'll pay for the meals for um, their feeding sites and the nutrition group, which has a competency in food uh, preparation, will prepare those meals and then go on a delivery route across, across the county delivering those meals. And then the site supervisor at the site and at Catholic Charities, it's a lovely lady named Bonnie, Bonnie will sign for those meals and then uh, serve those meals to kids. And so uh, as someone who is working to recruit site sponsors and increase participation at a general level, I just wanted to talk about um, certain things in the federal policy that made it a little bit harder to implement on the ground. Um, so something about Pittsburgh to note is Pittsburgh is very, very hilly, which makes it beautiful to drive through, but also really difficult to run programs effectively, specifically summer food, because there is a requirement, there's a congregate meal requirement, it requires that kids all be in the same place to receive a summer meal. Um, so what will happen often in Pittsburgh will be, there'll be a feeding site at the bottom of a hill and a low-income community at the top of a hill, and on paper it looks like those two things are very close together, but standing there you'll see that it's a very steep hill, there are a lot of cars on that hill, there's no sidewalk on that hill, and so it becomes a lot further and further once you add those certain, those barriers to that. Um, there are also parts of Allegheny County that are very rural and there's just not a place where kids can congregate, and so uh, this sort of requirement um, you know, makes it hard to uh, carry out the program uh, on the ground. And then I'll talk about the next two kind of in tandem because they're related. Um, so the food is reimbursable through the program and some of the administrative costs, but as your, as some of my colleagues talked about, starting up a summer, summer food program is pretty expensive and then expanding it to something that can act as a community resource um, is really difficult and really expensive. Um, so an example of how this plays out is I was recruiting a summer feeding site in a small low-income community that was experiencing pretty heavy waves of crime. Um, and so they wanted to operate a summer feeding site, but they also really were interested in having security for that feeding site because they were interested in serving supper. Um, and that was something that the Food Security Partnership and the Food Bank and different shareholders tried to drum up support and cash for because that is basically, it's a full-time position that's not really reimbursable through the program. Uh, and then if you're running an indoor site, you have to think about utility costs and all these things that come with you know, running a site from the ground that doesn't already um, exist or offer some of the programming. So those are some of the things we ran into. And then just as far as outreach, um, it can sometimes be like a full-time job to do outreach for um, the summer feeding program since there is no built-in mechanism to do that um, consistently. 
And so Bonnie, the lady at Catholic Charities, is a really great example of somebody who does outreach for summer food really well. Um, it's a, a Catholic Charities Pittsburgh is like right in the middle of Pittsburgh, and you'll find Bonnie like on the first day of summer food dancing in like a carrot suit outside of, <laughs> outside of the site. And um, she is really responsive to the needs of the kids. She last summer she booked a DJ um, to host like a kickoff dance party for the kids, and this summer she's uh, secured penguins from the Pittsburgh Zoo to come to the feeding site. And, and yeah, no, she's she's what Hannah was saying. Like you have the rock stars of the program, and that's really important. But the reason, one of the reasons why Bonnie can really be a rock star of the program is because she's a full-time paid employee of. Catholic Charities Pittsburgh, and it is her entire job to run programs like this for the community. And what I ran into while I was doing site recruitment was that you had a lot of would-be and could-be bonnies that weren't able to uh, sort of donate a full-time job position and not be compensated for that. Um, and it, like, if you're, you know, just g generally speaking, like watching a lot of kids, um, you're required to have one site supervisor. Um, but a lot of sites, if you're, you know, taking on kids and open site and it's unclear how many kids are going to show up, you want multiple people there to be able to run the program, serve the food if more kids than you planned showed up, and all these different unforeseeable costs, human costs and like very real monetary costs that associated with the program. These were things that I and others at the partnership try and troubleshoot when we um, are working with sites to sort of, particularly when they're coming from the ground up. So I just kind of wanted to leave you with this number. Um, this is the number of uh, kids in Allegheny County who are eligible for uh, summer food. 72,500. Only a little over 10,000 kids are using the program every summer. And so that's about an 86% service gap. And you sort of compare that with something like the school lunch program, which has very high participation rates in Allegheny County across schools. You'll see things in the 90%. And that's really great. And you wonder why a program this great when we know all the things we know about childhood food insecurity and how uh, like damaging it can be, how a program like this is so important but so underutilized. And a lot of it um, has to do with like implementing it on the ground and not really having that support mechanism in place. And so looping it back to the share table, the share table is a really great resource at summer feeding sites. Um, sharing is sort of welcomed and it's encouraged, but it's not something that there's any sort of compulsion in and that you know, even though it like sort of brings out rock stars and brings out like good feelings and good people, um, there's no sort of, that lack of compulsion can sometimes be its downfall. And that's something that I really found and was really apparent in recruiting for summer food. Um, yeah, and so I think that's something you think about when you're talking about something as weighty as childhood food insecurity. 